Hello, everyone. My name is Jeremiah Reed. I'm the author of Mental Wealth. And I'm also just really, really want to start this off by saying happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Um, you guys are so special. Uh, you guys don't get enough recognition. And I just want to take the time to create something special um, to kind of bring about some awareness regarding mental health and the pressures of motherhood and offer some solutions today for us to kind of um, just share and be creative and then kind of peel back all those things that could be bothering us that we typically don't talk about and talk about them today. So I really want you guys to just sit back, relax, take notes, feel free to engage. There's a chat section. If you guys have a question, feel free to um, chime in or either unmute and if you have something to say. But I'm going to be the narrator of this uh, um, discussion. I just want to make sure that um, we get through each and every question that someone has today. So I'll try to keep organization and balance to that, but feel free to use the chat or unmute. And now for the special panelists, I want to thank you all for uh, today. Um, first, we're going to start off with some introductions. Um, why don't we start first with Bianca, and then we go to Ariel, and then we go to Alexis. And we'll let Salon finish it off. All right, Bianca, let's go. All right, thank you, Jeremiah. So my name is Bianca Wright. I'm from Indianapolis, but I currently live in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. I am currently a business analyst at a financial firm and recently joined Jeremiah on this financial coaching journey. And I've had my first child, only one kid, at age 22. Cool. Thank you, Bianca. Ariel? Hey everybody, uh, my name is Ariel as a Chukwu. I am originally from East Chicago, Indiana, but I currently, uh, we've been living in Austin, Texas for about two years now. I have two boys, one is three years old and I had him when I was about, well, about, I was 26 when I had him and then Zaid, my little baby is four months old. So they're about exactly three years apart. Just had him, I'm 29, um, I've, as a mother, I've been in grad school, I've worked in tech, and currently I'm like a side hustle queen, planning to go back into tech um, probably in the next couple months. Okay, thank you. Thank Alexis. you. All right, guys, hello. Happy Mother's Day to any mom that's on. Uh, Jeremiah, thank you for having me on this. Um, so my name is Alexis Johnson. I am currently an entrepreneur. I just launched a holistic business and I um, really want to go full force with that. Um, I have three daughters. My oldest is seven, my middle is four, and my youngest is 11 months and all girls. Okay, thank you. And then lastly, my beautiful wife. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Salam. Um, I was born in Eritrea, but I've been in um, the U.S. for the majority of my life. I've been in Indiana, and, um, sorry, I, um, and I am currently working for Carvana as a recruiter. I've been in recruiting for about um, four years total now, um, but I just joined Carvana about six months ago, and I became a mom in t when I was 27, um, or I had my first child at 27, but I, um, was um, a stepmom in 2014, so yeah. All right, cool, thank you all. So just to kick this off, I know it takes a village to raise a child. <coughs> Sometimes you might not have the support system that you need and that can bring a lot of pressure and stress. So if you guys can kind of let me in on how value um, is a support system, and if you have one, if you want to share a little bit about the uh, support system. I can definitely take this one. So I wholeheartedly believe it takes a village to raise a child. I am a single parent living in a city that I didn't grow up in. I moved from Indiana to Ohio for a few years and then moved here. But God has truly blessed me to always be surrounded around people who genuinely love me and care for me and accept me and my daughter. So my family is available, 
but they're not physically here. They can be here <laughs> with a flight, but they're not physically here. So I have friends and church family that you know how sometimes you want to protect your kids, like uh, you feel like I'm not ever going to let my kids spend night at this person's house or go anywhere without me. Uh, but I just happen to meet people where immediately our spirits match mm -hmm. and I trust them. And uh, so I definitely, though I'm a single parent, I'm not raising my daughter alone. I might have a majority of the time, but it's, it's a whole lot of us. Um, definitely grateful for my support system. And I would encourage people to have a support system if you don't have one. Cool. Thanks for answering that, Bianca. Uh, I know sometimes when it's just you, maybe you're married, you have a husband or a boyfriend, kind of walk me through how you communicate um, to your loved one when you're feeling that stress. If you don't have an outside support system and all you have is just um, a boyfriend or a husband or a fiance. I'll um, talk to that because we have, we've been living in Austin for the last two years and we moved out here because I had a job here and we really don't, we don't have any, my aunt lives about an hour away, but for the most part, it's just been myself and my husband. And even for like the first year, almost, it was mostly just me and my son because my husband was pursuing um, his interest in football and things like that. And so he was in different cities. So that was actually also our first year of marriage. And um, so that was like really trying. And so when I was thinking about, you know, how do I talk to him and how do I ask him, um, express things to him? I was having a hard time really articulating it, but I thought about it because it kind of depends. It depends on why I'm stressed um, because sometimes I'm stressed and it's something that I caused, right? I wasn't prepared. I didn't, um, I, I didn't plan for something. I overreacted to something. And so a lot of times, those are times where I have to kind of sort things out on my own and figure out a solution almost before I kind of come to him and complain, et cetera. Um, but for the most part, I also asked him, <laughs> Like, how do I tell you? And originally, I didn't used to talk at all. I didn't used to tell him, like, when I was stressed, when I was in my breaking points, simply because I think I was trying to do everything and I was comparing myself to what I thought my mom would do um, because she didn't have she didn't have someone in the house that she could kind of to talk to and to take that other side of things. But now, um, if, like, if it's something related to the kids or my husband in particular, I, I can go straight to him and just tell him, like, this is how I'm feeling right now. Um, and I can make a request or something like, hey, can you take the kids on a walk right now? Or um, can you can you have this shift at night? Because we have a four month old. Um, so that's, we're at a point now where I can just tell him, but it, it took some us gaining some trust and things like that because we weren't married when we had my first son. We were kind of barely in a relationship when we had our first son. So originally I didn't have much trust um, in him, I think, to express when I was feeling broken or stressed out. But now that has definitely changed. And then uh, just last part to that. Um, every time I'm stressed, it's not always something I can even tell not to say I can tell him about, but it's not always something that he can help me with. So sometimes it's me seeking counsel from a girlfriend or some, um, a mentor or something like that. And then I might actually come to him after. So it may be, he may know, he may pick up on the fact that I'm stressed and I have to tell him like, yes, but I can't really articulate it right now. Let me, um, um, go figure that out. And then I'll come back and tell him kind of what it was or what we were going through. So it kind of just depends on why I'm stressed. Got you. No, that's pretty good. Um, you said a couple of things I want some people to, to really think about and take some notes on. Um, you said the word comparison. And that's something I want to bring up that's very important. Like, though you might have role models or um, someone that you can count on in your support system and you would love to be like them as a mother, please do not get caught in that trap of comparison. You are the only mom. Um, for your kids. And your mom journey might be different from somebody else's mom journey. And that doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, um, but it's something for you to figure out. And we believe um, that God will show you um, exactly how he wants you um, to be a parent. So thanks for bringing that up. And I know Alexis, um, you said that, hey, you're launching this new business. So how do you kind of like balance um, everything from being a mom 
marketing your new business, making products. I'll be seeing you on Instagram and Facebook, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot of things. So just kind of talk to me about that balance. Yeah, thank you for asking. Um, it's definitely a work in progress, if I could truly be honest. Um, but this is not the first like business adventure that I've started. Um, we had a, the cleaner business that we started. So I've already kind of been engulfed in trying to balance. Um, and definitely I would contribute a lot of my success to, you know, being married and to having a husband that wants to continuously pour in in different ways like that uh, in different things that I have going on. Like I'm like, all right, today I want to sell t-shirts. He's like, all right, well, what are we going to do? Or, you know, today I want to do this or that. He's like super like supportive. So I believe that him is truly where my balance lies. Um, and I know that God made that happen for a reason. Um, but with East Garden, I just started. So I literally try to uh, manage the days that I'm going to actually cook things. So I'm preparing herbs. I'm preparing uh, elderberry uh, syrup or sea moss or whatever. Like I try to plan the days. Okay, Monday, I'm going to actually make these things. Okay, then I'm going to take orders from Tuesday to Friday, kind of where I would actually be able to manage my time at home because I'm home with the kids and then manage what I'm actually doing with my time. And it's um, a circle, you know, some days where I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to do this or I'm supposed to do that. And then I didn't get all those things done. So it's really renewing my mind <laughs> on a daily, like trying to make sure that I'm doing and balancing being a mom, being a wife being an entrepreneur, being there for others, you know, researching and doing all the other things that I actually am involved in. So definitely a, a cycle of renewing my mind. That's how I balance it. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and Jeremiah, connected to that, you had shared previously when giving advice to a mom that if your children are of an age where if there's a part of your business if you are um, another entrepreneur out there like Alexis, if there's a part of your business where your kids can be involved, like having them assist, if they sorting out envelopes and put in uh, oh, yeah. invo <laughs> invoices and packages, like you can bring them to work in your uh, business as well. So. Definitely. Yeah, that's a great way to double dip and still get some family time in so the children don't feel isolated. So, and it's funny know, because they'll uh, sometimes they'll hear the doorbell or something like, or oh, what you about to make some elder, you about to do this, or they'll pretend, you know, in their own little room, like I'm doing this. And it's just so funny how they see that happening, you know? Yeah. So I know all of you have a job. You all have kids, obviously, um, fairly young mothers. So how do you balance the God part? Um, how are you setting time aside to be with God on a kind of consistent basis? Okay, let me leave that. Um, I can talk about that. Um, so for us, um, one thing that we try to do is just make sure that we're, sorry, hold on. <laughs> okay. Be jealous. Um, so yeah, I know he's trying to get like both of our attention. Daddy right here. Yeah, daddy's right there. Um, sorry about that guys. Um, so we, tr first, the most important thing is just trying to make sure that we're living out what we're trying to teach our kids. So we try to show by example, um, what we want them to follow. But one thing that, um, that we do is um, we have like weekly Bible studies together um, and we discuss, you know, pa passages and stuff. And these are things that are scheduled so that we know that they are coming up um, so that, you know, things don't get in the way, you know, with um, Jeremiah running his business and um, with just me working and having to balance the kids. It's going to be interesting. I'm upstairs. My wife is downstairs. I know. Can you go outside here? Okay. I'm going to have to pause. Sorry, guys. Okay. Cool. We'll yeah. switch it off. Um, I can speak I, to that if I can. Uh, yeah. Chime in, Alexis. Yeah. So I feel like here lately, I've been, um, we cut, we've been quarantined, right? Like everybody's been at home. So I feel like we've been on a uh, fast. Everybody been fasting from work, from wherever you've been at, like it's truly a fast. And I think that, I thank God for the time because it truly has taught me, okay, what, what are you, what's important? What are you supposed to be doing? What are you supposed to be teaching them? You know, like, are you relying on somebody else to teach them, you know, certain things like you be the teacher of all things, spiritual education, like 
being a girl, whatever it is, like you are the teacher of all that. So I feel like the way I included God in my day, like I'm definitely staying up at night, like just to get in the things that I feel like I need to pour into me. Like I need to be able to be all those things. So I, I stay up later, you know, and I wake up a little bit earlier than they do, you know, and that's not something that I always was able to do. It was like, you know, to be honest, like I need to get these extra hours in because I'm tired. But now it's like, I need to get up because I need, a, I need to fill my cup up with something so that I could give to them, like literally. And I think that God has been meeting me in those times that like never before, like, cause I've been just like truly empty, fill me up. Like, and I, I really wanted to just share that. No, thank you. Um, I can definitely. Can I, can I continue to talk? Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, yes. go. No, you go. But that was a perfect example of balancing because Noah just came over here and started throwing up and all that. So, um, but yeah, so um, yeah, so we just try to incorporate it in all of our lives. So we do daily readings and um, we make sure that we pray together every night and um, try to make sure that we're including God in everything that we do. So whether it's a test that we're going to take, um, whether it's, you know, us just leaving in the morning, driving, make sure we're praying to like get back home safely to wherever mm -hmm. we're going. Um, we just think those are things, those are things that they see on a regular basis. So we want to make sure that they, um, well, with Samaya anyway, Noah's still young, but he's still seeing us doing those. So he'll still like, you know, at the end be like, amen, you know, he'll be running, running around and then at the end he'll come and just say amen. And, um, but yeah, we just try to make sure we, um, do this, those things together and then individually as well to let them know how important it is to have that individual relationship and as a family, him being the center. So we do those things together as well. So. Bianca, you had something you want to add? Yeah, outside of those nuggets, because I do all of those uh, as well. One thing that I do with Nyla every day when she wakes up, even if we're running late, I always ask her, like, did you have a dream? Did you feel someone talking to you? Um, and sometimes, like, it's a no, but then other times she's able to share that uh, she had a nightmare. Other times she's like, mommy, I'm just happy today. Like when she wakes up and I try to teach her how God could be speaking through her from the things that she's feeling because being only eight years old, sometimes she will almost eight. Sometimes she feels like God's voice is like another voice that she's supposed to hear. And one day she was like, mommy, God doesn't talk to me. And it's important for us as parents to realize the as we discovered the way God talks to us, like he's speaking to our kids and we have to pour into them of what that looks like. And so that's some of the ways that I dig it out of her. Cool. That's cool. I like that. Thank you. And so I know a lot of stress or a lot of pressure can come from your childhood and how your relationship maybe was with your mother. Can someone speak on how their childhood impacted them as a mother, whether it was good or bad? Okay, I'll run my mouth again. Um, <laughs> I am <laughs> intentionally focused on personal development. And I think my childhood had a lot to do with the way I parent, whether um, I do or do not um, do things a certain type of way. I think our parents' generation um, did the best that they could, and I'm at the age now where I can see that. So whether it was they did what they feel was best right there in the moment or they did what they were taught. Um, and I think we have a space to change the narrative. And so some of the things, like I got whoopings or spankings as a kid. Like I feel like the stereotypical black home that when I was pregnant, with my daughter, I was like, oh, I'm never gonna whoop her. Like, I don't know why anybody would whoop their kid. And pretty soon I realized, <laughs> I understand. But <laughs> I totally get it. Um, but there's other ways of discipline that could be explored. My child is not one where a whooping works for her. So really I'm just releasing my frustrations on her and ultimately I'm releasing my pain and pushing it to her. And I just believe that the impact that that can carry if it's not dealt with or if you just don't change the narrative, your kids are going to grow up in therapy. Um, and not saying therapy is bad, but I think that uh, we have to change the narrative. And so for me, my daughter, 
is seven going on 27. So um, she's completely skipped 17. And so going on 27, so I'm able to talk to her and it's like connecting what really is like her love for the moment. Right now she loves TV. So it is the most painful thing in the world if you say no TV for the day. Like life is over, she wants to move with Nana and pop on. Like, so um, I think my childhood taught me that take the time to heal in the areas that I want healing in so that I'm not passing it on to my child. Um, I try to be a little bit of my mom, a little bit of my dad, but then also figuring out who I want to be and marrying the three. Along with, um, I had a lot of friends, parents that took me on as a second kid. And as you were mentioned, talking about comparison, I started with the comparison game and I quickly learned like, no, I have exposures to these people to learn how to be a better mother for myself. And so it's not the, I, I don't have good days all the time, but my child is kind hearted and she's able to speak her emotions. I give her space to say how she feels. And um, I, I like that. I like that. I like the path that we're heading on. And uh, I learned that from my childhood. Thank you. Appreciate that. I think uh, if I can chime in a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so one thing I learned from my childhood is, um, so, you know, ours was kind of a little different. My parents brought, you know, five kids to a country that they have, they know nothing about. Um, so what I saw majority of my life, like growing up is them being providers. So they were, you know, so focused on making sure that they were taking care of all of us and um, finding ways to make more money so that we didn't struggle. So they were really good providers, but they didn't take the time to kind of like, you know, either them enjoy their life and, um, um, just us being able to know them more intimately. So we love them. They were there for us when we needed them, but they didn't like on a regular time, like spend time with us or kind of get to know us on a deeper level. So I think um, me as a parent, that's one thing I try to change with my kids is that, you know, I come home from work. I like work is at work like leaving it there and then coming home and making sure that I'm present with my kids and just making sure that I'm there for them when they need it, you know, whether it's helping smile with her homework or just like playing with Noah, um, just needing, be, trying to be what they need me to be when I'm home and trying to be just there for them. So um, yeah, you know, we are, we have good jobs and we provide for them. We get them what they need. We have a good home. Um, but you know, there's just so much more balance to it. Um, kids need all of that. They need to make sure that, you know, you're not just so focused on, you know, telling them like, well, didn't I buy you that toy or don't you have food to eat? You know, constantly telling them those things like they need more love and support. So that's one thing I try to focus on based off my childhood. Cool. And so I have another question. This one is from the audience and it's probably going to blend into, um, the question I had about self care, but how do you guys manage your mental health and like what forms of self-care do you practice as mothers to get that peace? So I'll take this, like, I'm not going to say I'm like a self-care queen or anything, but it's something that I truly, truly believe in. And it's just, it's simply the way I, I manage my health. Like I have my daily routines, my weekly routines and monthly routines. And I read a book years ago, um, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And at the time, that book really felt, it felt overwhelming to think about all the planning that he suggested in the book, like how, how you plan initially so that, you know, you save time, you spend a lot of time planning initially, but you save time on the back end. And for a while, that didn't really resonate with me. But I, when I looked over like what routines I actually have, they're, they're not all just about me taking care of my, my body per se, but like daily, I get exercise no matter what, whether it's a walk. Right now, I'm on, I'm on kind of like a, uh, an hour of exercise an evening. And for me, that's my reset. Like Alexis talked about like filling her cup back up and recharging. Um, I could do it earlier in the day, but I choose to do it when the kids are asleep because it's almost meditative for me. It's a time where I tune into my body and out of my mind because I'm literally in my mind all day. Like I'm very type A, like I'm always thinking and trying to vis be a, visualize things. Um, but when I'm in my body, it helps me get out of my mind. And I actually usually end up after my workouts with new 
solutions to things that I've been toiling over. Um, so that's something daily. It's not always an hour workout. Sometimes it's just a walk. We live in Austin, so the weather is very good. So although we've been away from family, that's been a plus. But um, the other thing that I um, really mentioned uh, I wanted to talk about was, I guess I set boundaries with my children. And that kind of blends in with me and my mental health, but also um, something I learned from when I was raised. Like we had a set bedtime. Um, I'm, even though my son is only three, he's literally had the same bedtime since he was first born and my other son he's on he's on clockwork kind of now too they go to bed at 7 30 every night that's how I manage my, me and my my husband we both manage our mental health by making sure that they're well rested because when they're well rested they behave better um and then we get that those couple hours at the end of the night um to to do us or spend that time together and um daily affirmations something I didn't used to be big on but now especially with quarantine right now we're all together. Some days I feel smothered. Um, so I literally have like affirmations on my computer, which used to sound corny to me. But knowing now what I know, the science of like rewiring our brains and, and things like that, like I literally speak these all day now. Um, but then weekly, those are like meal prepping. Um, something that initially, again, it seems like a lot of work, but it saves me headaches. It saves me decision-making time throughout the week. And um, what that does is then some evenings, I can spend more time with my family. Um, Tariq, my, my three-year-old, is less, is less stressed because I'm able to set expectations with him about food. So then it's not always, can I have a snack or can I have this? But I can tell him what to expect when it comes to food. Because I don't know about y'all, but toddlers and food is the most. So that's a way that I personally... <laughs> manage my mental health but also um provide myself myself self-care and then monthly that's us that's budget budgeting and looking over our finances and things like that and staying true to these things so again it goes back to lessening the amount of decisions that we have to make on the daily if i have routines in place then i do have routines in place that allow us to make less decisions even when it comes to like what we're gonna buy what we're gonna spend money on um, knowing what we're going to eat, that all helps me manage my mental health because it's decisions that have been pre-made. So I don't have to get decision fatigue worrying about things every single day. Gotcha. Um, if you don't mind sharing some of those affirmations uh, with the crowd. So actually someone who's logged on here now, my friend Danisha Reed, she's a Reiki healer. Shout out to her yoga teacher, um, aka like someone who's truly when we talk about building community but one thing something i have on here now is i see clearly i think clearly i trust my intuition i trust my decisions i know the answer i create my reality i trust in myself i trust in my abilities um and um i express my creativity freely i love myself unconditionally i feel connected to others i love myself and allow others to love me i'm confident i'm powerful and kind and i make my own choices so they're all really centered around me trusting myself and believing in myself, um, raising my self-esteem and, and not tying my self-worth to things that maybe things that I've done in the past, um, but also just opening myself up to receive love from other people and to give love to people, my husband, my children, things like that. No, I appreciate that. Those yeah, those are good. Those, those are really good. good. And I got to. Yeah, I was like, through. I was trying to write them down. Uh, I can screw, I can take a picture and send yeah, them. Yeah, I'm gonna need yeah. you to put that in the email follow up for us. No, I, uh, and, uh, I definitely appreciate those gems, and I am not as great as that. I am still learning the self love, but when it comes to taking care of my mental health, um, one of the things my sisters have taught me is for one, slowing down and accepting my feelings. Like, I am a quick of, I don't, okay, I shouldn't be feeling this way or I don't want to do, and it's like, no, if this is how you feel, it's okay. And so taking a moment to slow down and um, feeling the emotion, in the morning, waking up and saying, today is going to be a good day. Determining what's going to happen in my day before the day even starts. And it sets the tone. Um, and this is all new for me because I can definitely live in my head and my thoughts and go to negative things. And I really just have been slowing down, listening to God's word, 
I have post-it notes. I don't know if y'all remember being Mary Jane, but I'm probably that bad. Um, I have post-it notes all over my house and every room with similar affirmations. And so, uh, but I definitely just want to call out, determine, determine how your day is going to go before it even starts and just allowing yourself to feel the feel. And when you need help, know that it's bravery to ask for help. Don't mm-hmm. feel like you're a burden to anyone. Like we are all in this world together. Yeah. So, so I had a great question that just came up. What is the number one advice you would give to new mothers? If each one of you want to drop one nugget um, to answer this question, that'd be great. I'm gonna I'm just say, eat eat food that nourishes your body. Period. Like for me, that was one. That's one of my self care routines because when when you eat food that nourishes your body, your hormones are in better balance. Um, and this is the the fitness coach me, uh, but it's it's something I've adopted. Period. Your hormones are in better balance. Um, you sleep better. You feel better. You have more energy. You think clearer. Um, you feel better about a lot of times your body and yourself. Um, but when I'm eating stuff, it also, my, again, I have a three-year-old, <laughs> but the food that I eat, I feed to my husband and I feed to my kids. And overall, um, I think for us, food is literally the center of everything. So as a new mom and the demands on your sleep in particular, you have to, you have to nourish your body. So just, just eat the best you can. Okay. Who got nugget number two? I would say, go ahead, Bianca. Go. No, you go. Okay. Um, don't be afraid to leave that baby with a loved one to go get a break. Um, they will love your son or daughter. And so take. it's okay to take a moment to step away as you need it. I would say that. I would say to take inventory over your mothering, like who mothered you, how they mothered you and see what you want to take from that, what you don't want to set some goals for yourself as a mom and realize that you can recreate and unlearn and do this thing all the way, the way you want to do it. Okay, thank you. um, So for me, I think it was um, like, I'm a very like schedule type person and um, like, and I read a lot of books on like trying to prepare myself for when I had my son, but like literally all that went out the window. Every child is like different. Like there's not a way that you can like learn them before they get there. Um, so those things that they tell you about, you know, resting and just making sure that you're like what everyone else said, just making sure you're taking care of yourself. All those are very important. Um, sleeping when the baby's sleeping, like you will have time to wash the dishes or clean up the house like later, all that will still be there when you wake up. Um, so just making sure that you're taking care of yourself, number one. And because Alexa said unlearn and then I'm done, I promise. There's two books I would recommend. There's Unlearn by Humble the Poet. Really, really good. And also a book called It Didn't Start With You. And it's about, um, unlearn is kind of obvious, but It Didn't Start With You helps you to reflect on your childhood and traumas and things that are just passed on from generation that as a new mommy, um, if you don't want to pass that down, if you want to have the tools uh, to stop that, I would suggest those two books. Okay. So this is a question. Uh, does cooking spaghetti and having it for a week count as meal prepping? <laughs> yes. <laughs> eating something is better than eating nothing let's keep that i mean if you're gonna eat the spaghetti and it makes you feel good yes if you're gonna Uh and it makes you we have spaghetti in the fridge sometime for a week like absolutely you can freeze (laughs) spaghetti you can freeze stuff like that you know and pull it out later (laughs) so yeah oh no but on a serious note i just want to talk about food i know um i grew up during a time where Happy Meals was a big deal, um, processed food really didn't get that much attention, and our parents gave us whatever that um, they could afford. So if you just want to talk about clean eating and um, 
the pressures that you feel from all the unwanted food that's being advertised to your children? And how do you handle that? Yeah, I'll answer that one for a little bit. Ariel, you can chime in too. But um, for me, so my kids, seven, four, and 11 months. Here lately, I've taken a whole transition to trying to really be vegan. And, you know, it started with, my oldest daughter who was constipated from dairy and it really weighed on me like why you know I'm trying to give her probiotics and different things to help her have a healthy gut you know but then she would still be constipated and I'm like what is this so I really I, I began to pray for wisdom I'm like Lord give me wisdom on what this thing is and how I can help you know so what's the question again because I might get off Topic of this, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're good. Um, how do you handle the pressures of uh, all the unwanted food there being advertised to your kids now? And okay. uh, what's your take on clean eating? Okay, got it. So clean eating. So because she had the issue, I wanted to clear up everything that we had. Like, was anything, you know, any uh, allergies or things like that I was really like going crazy trying to figure out what it was. Um, and then I had to kind of pull back of that and realize that if I'm going to plan this thing out, like I actually have to plan to make sure that she's, you know, not just not eating nothing because I'm like, well, you can't eat that. You can't eat that. You can't eat that. You know, it was like a, a big thing, you know, and she would cry. Oh, I want a pizza, I'm like, but you can't have cheese. You can't have, you know, and it was just really like a, a struggle. So I began to teach them about food, like what this color kind of food means or this, you know, trying to teach them like that. And so now they'll make those decisions like, Oh, well, yeah, I don't want to eat white rice tonight because of blah, 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 you know, and I'll teach them, well, you know, this is us. Like, this is not for the whole world. This is our household, you know? So if somebody else is doing that, like that, you know, it's still okay for them, you know, like don't put that on somebody else, but this is what we are going to do to help clean up our eating for different reasons. And then as far as, um, anything else you know we we try our best to you know get uh food on sale or fruits and just put all the good stuff in them and they really the taste buds what i've learned that the taste buds begin to change so they won't want that stuff you know they'll some of like my daughter now she'll say you know i don't want syrup on my stuff or i don't want honey or you know she'll say that i'm like what okay so like the the way you transition it'll it'll fall right where it needs to go the taste buds will Okay, gotcha. Anybody else want to add? I'll definitely chime in because um, this is something that, like, I'll walk into the grocery store and I literally feel like there's a war against our children. Like, everything is sparkly and colorful. Like, these mark, like, I'm not sure if these marketers feel bad or not. If you work in food, I'm sorry. But <laughs> it's it's kind of scary, right? So, the easiest way I found to like manage what my son eats at least is I'm we're the ones purchasing it. And again, it's us um, setting those expectations, but also um, um, making it cost of, I hear a lot that, you know, eating healthy is expensive and um, it can be, I think if you're trying to eat healthy and recreate things that you kind of already are used to eating, like, going vegan for instance if you want to buy the vegan burgers or if you want to buy things that are pre-packaged and made to be like food that you're used to be used to eating it can very well be expensive but when you eat whole foods um like buying a chicken and um or chicken thighs or or different things like that um and and shopping around those perimeters getting the vegetables and and things like it's not that expensive um but um we create a budget every month period on food and we meal plan every month so that helps make it cost effective like yes i spend two hours every month right figuring out what meals we're going to eat and making my list but what it allows us to do it prevents me from impulse buying if i even if i'm the one who wants the sweets i, ca I can't even get it because if, it, if it's not on this list and it's not prioritized um and at least one thing piece of advice I guess I feel like I'm at a point where I have a I'm real systematic and I have a process but it took me like a long time of like learning about food and reading about food and learning recipes get your spice cabinet on point because if you got your spice cabinet on point 
You ain't got your kids gonna gonna eat that gonna eat almost. I'm not gonna say they're going to because it's gonna be different. But if the food is flavorful and tasty, they're gonna eat it. And with a few different spices, um, you can turn uh, uh some chicken or some kale or um bean. We eat like 20 different kinds of beans and rice. Like you can make take a bag of red beans and some rice, and it can be coconut Caribbean rice. It can be um, Mexican rice, Salvadorian rice and beans. It could be, um, you know, Jamaican rice and beans. It can be, it can be peas and stew. It can be so many different ways. So my challenge is, I guess, um, or what I've learned to keep everything on a budget and keep my kids interested in, in foods that aren't necessarily hyper processed is just to make it taste damn good. And that means we, my, my spice cabinet is on point so I can switch so many different flavor profiles. I hope I like it. So, I think what, this is a note. You can't get Miss Dash all the time. You got to switch it up and get the real ingredients. Easy on Miss Dash. The shade. <laughs> I mean, you got to have it, but you know, once you once you learn how to use, you can use cumin in like five different cuisines. Once you know that, and again, it goes back to just taking a little bit of time to focus on that, you can make so much stuff with very simple and very minimal ingredients. And I think you need to, as a mom, like, you know, because me coming into motherhood, if I can be honest with y'all, I wasn't cooking. I was barely washing the dishes. Like, you know, I'm being honest. Like, my mom didn't teach me that kind of stuff. You know, I had to learn how to be a woman, you know, once I got into marriage. And I thank God for a husband that was willing to let me learn as we went, you know, or was able to cook or do certain things, you know. So I think that investing in yourself to start reading, okay, what? what's good recipe or you know what's what can i make or what can i uh you know learn like in, investing in yourself that way like one dish at a time like that's what that's what i did i like that so i know as mothers one thing that i read about in newspapers seeing horror stories regarding postpartum depression um after you first have your kid walk me through that moment for you if you went through it and then also what would what advice would you offer other women who might face uh, postpartum depression? Um, I can speak on that a little bit. Um, so when um, I had my son in 2017, um, everything like that could go unplanned was un like it went that way. Um, so you know, from him um, being premature to um, you know having to do an emergency C-section, all that like everything that I planned. Um, went unexpected. So um, that was very hard for me. So when he was born, you know, he was very tiny. He was, you know, um, five pounds and went down to four pounds. So um, everything was scary. Like I was trying to make sure that I was doing, you know, just, you know, feeding him right. You know, we were breastfeeding. So um, just making sure that he was getting enough, like not thinking he was getting enough, not sleeping enough, all that just kept me like worried. Um, and then um, in 2018 as well, um, that's when um, my daughter moved in with us full time as well. So it was kind of like trying to learn how to be a mother of two with a newborn, um, you know, just all at the same time. So with me, like I went through kind of a really bad stage of postpartum depression, not that there is a good stage, but um, just it kind of hit me out of nowhere. And I think what um, made it even worse was that I was trying to kind of, I was trying to keep it to myself. Um, like Jeremiah literally had no idea. Like we just talked about this probably like when babe, I, I don't know. Um, just like recently, like a few months ago, probably um, to, to like let him know how bad it was. Like he knew like I was like crying out of nowhere and all that, but um, he didn't know like to what extent. Um, so for me, like I was trying to be what everyone needed me to be, um, you know, trying to um, making sure like my son was, you know, eating enough and sleeping enough and then um, trying to make sure I'm comforting my daughter, you know, her being away from her mom at for extended time at the same time, you know, just her like trying to make sure she was, you know, comfortable and um, had that support and then making sure like, you know, my husband was like sleeping enough, all that, like worrying about everyone except myself. And um, so that, you know, I would go try to, you know, pretend I'm taking a shower, turn on the water, cry, let it out. Um, and just, um, I don't know, it was, it, it, I, I, I don't even know if I can like fully like just kind of explain everything that I was going through. Um, and I think what finally kind of broke that is just knowing that I couldn't be 
everything that everyone needed me to be while not taking care of myself. Um, and I know I kind of mentioned that earlier, but that was a big discovery for my, for me, um, knowing that um, I had to get out of my schedule or what was comfortable. I'm a very like, um, like I have to know what's happening and I have to have it planned, all that. And, and that you can't have planned. And um, I talked to um, one of my friends about it that had a baby recent, like right before me, and we were kind of a you know support system. I joined um, like a mom's group, um, and you know would randomly ask questions at any time of the day on there. So that kind of um, alleviated some pressures off of me as well. Um, and then my husband was very supportive. Like he was there. Like he took the time off. Like for, you know, for the first like four months. So it wasn't that I was doing it alone. It was just that I felt like I wasn't doing it right. Um, and I think that's the, like, that's the pressure we choose to put on ourselves. And I know we have a lot to do, but that's something that um, we really, like we're not gonna be perfect. There's not a perfect um, child. There's not a perfect mom. There's only a perfect God. So we can only, you know, choose to just like give it to him and know that he loves our child more than we do and just um, go with the flow. I guess I don't know. Oh, that's good. And I I had postpartum, but I think I did a a really great job <laughs> at hiding it and because I lived in Ohio by myself, like my family didn't know um and it was something where honestly I started having really dark thoughts. Like um rather it was dark thoughts about myself and like this baby would be better off with somebody else um and so like i should just end all this now or um i even sorry i'm like about to get emotional about to even have dark thoughts about like my child dying like not that i wanted her to die but i literally kept having this continuous dream that my child died and um when I finally, because I feel like I kind of like played around with religion and spirituality. So I really don't say I became a Christian until I was 23. And yeah, my daughter was around two that I actually started praying like, what does this mean? But the whole time, I didn't know I was in postpartum depression. I'm just thinking, I'm sad that I'm raising this child by myself. And my daughter was a good baby, like slept all day if you let her. Um, so it was really, if I look retrospect and pay attention to my behavior, paying attention to my thoughts, I started praying uh, from the teachings of a woman that I, I got close to my pastor's wife at the time. And what through that God taught me is I'm responsible for my daughter, but I don't own my daughter. And so if she were to be taken away from me, and I no longer had the title of mother, like who would I be? And that caused me, I had, I felt that explanation in a dream and I said it to my pastor's wife and my pastor and her like took on for the next two years of ultimately counseling me and uh, planting seeds in my life for motherhood that, um, I didn't really give too many people the space to do. So um, I would say for anyone who is suffering through that, or honestly, if you don't know, I would say pay attention to how you feel about parenting and how you feel about your child. And if it's a feeling that you don't think is right, talk to someone. Rather, it, it, talk to someone that's not judgmental, talk to someone that's not gonna push religion, just pray it away, um, down you. Um, and if you don't have anyone, like, I know I don't know all y'all, but like, I'm available. <laughs> like, I, <laughs> my name is Bianca Wright on all social media platforms because it is so important. I tried to run from it, um, again, like I said, but my pastor's wife really ministered to me. I moved here to be with my sister to think, okay, I just need to be connected to someone else. And it was still there. So I knew it was deeper. So seek help um, and whatever that looks like. I know some good therapists too. So like, we are here. Yeah. I want to speak on that too. Um, when when I uh, was actually pregnant with my last daughter, um, probably in a, like six months pregnant, my aunt who I was really close with passed away in the middle of my pregnancy and that was really hard for me to deal with 
Uh, we wasn't able to have a funeral and it was a bunch of just family mess that um, I never experienced and definitely not while pregnant. Um, so after actually, I, I tried to seek counseling during that time because I did feel anxiety or something like working up in, in me and I was scared. I was scared to think, <laughs> literally. And after I had her, um, those those feelings kind of lingered around, you know, I was able to kind of get through that thing. And I didn't realize that it was uh, depression. I would say I wasn't depressed, but I was, I had anxiety very heavily. And not only just because of that thing, but because of some other things that I was dealing with, as far as delivering a baby, when you deliver a baby, like your body goes through so many great, but hard things. And after you deliver, you know, like your body has to go back to normal. Like it has to reduce the hormones you have, reduce all of the things that you, the blood and all of that that you carry while you had the baby. So once I was able to kind of learn why I was feeling the way I was feeling, I was like, all right, you got to go through this. You got to get through this. You will make it through this. It was things that I had to teach myself and tell myself that I was going to get through it, that it wasn't just, you know, I wasn't crazy. Or I wasn't, you know, like feeling different things for no reason. It was for a reason and that it would go back to normal. So I think not me being honest with that and not trying to hold it in, I was able to release it. Now, I still deal with some level of anxiety, but I'm coming out of it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> um, and I believe that as we learn what triggers, you know, those things, uh, we can overcome them. So that's where my approach to being like holistic and trying to eat better and different things like that is is where that came in at. Um, because sometimes it's not it's not always um, the hormones are out of balance. It's something we're eating. It's some, a trauma. It's something that happens, you know, that triggers that thing, and it wants to just you know continue to take root, you know. But we have to be smart about it and address it and seek the help like you're saying like don't be afraid because all women go through that same level of going back down to normal like we all go through that but everybody just handles it differently some people talk about it some people don't it, it may happen after the baby it may happen during you know so i just wanted to share that with moms you know and just be encouraged you know as a mom if you even if you dealt with it when your kid got five or something like you know it's still things that we go through that as moms, you know, we have to try to balance our lives out enough to n listen to our bodies enough to know what's going on and to get the help. I actually just want to add to this. I'm sorry. Um, it's good. I know we get to the end, but so I would say that I've had two completely different postpartum experiences, right? Like the first time, like it, it can take, like we said, up to years sometimes for these things to you to fully realize what's going on or it, and if that's the case. So for me, about a year after I had my son, my first son, I found myself in counseling. Um, but I thought it was because, you know, I was working on my thesis and I got stuck. And after having that, con having conversations, what I realized was I was still holding certain feelings against myself because I had a baby out of way a lot. I had a baby that I wasn't prepared for. I had a baby with somebody who, who left a lot of uncertain. I still had a lot of uncertainty of their place in my life at that time. And so the other side to that was because of all those things, I didn't fully trust him. And even though he was there and present and active, I didn't allow him to, to, to really help me. Um, but also because I had a mom who raised three kids by herself, my dad's still in jail. My son, my brother's son, my brother's dad is dead. My, you know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like I couldn't complain. I couldn't say anything. Like, I, it's no way that she could do all of this and raise me to be okay. And I can't handle this with a babysit with a, with a man who's here to help me. Right. And it's just one kid. So I played that comparison game heavy. I was, um, I wasn't trusting that, um, and, I, and I, I don't speak a whole lot to my relationship with God. It's something I'm so, so, so still exploring. But at that time, I didn't realize that my, 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 my now husband, my son's father, had all the qualities that I wanted in a partner, all the qualities that I needed in a partner. But 
I was had this wall up because I was worried about what people was gonna think of me, what people was gonna say about me. Um, if I didn't, if I didn't finish grad school, maybe I was gonna have to postpone it. I was worried about because my life just happened a way that I just completely didn't imagine it not to. Right? My mom did certain things so that supposedly I would, you know, have my white picket fence first comes love, marriage, then I have my baby. So I think. Um, it took me a whole year to realize that I had never processed my experience becoming a mother. I never fully appreciated my experience of becoming a mother because I was so worried about external things, how I looked on the outside, um, what it was going to impede on with my career and all these things. And when I finally was able to sit down and and talk to somebody uh, and, and have them ask me questions and just cry freely it allowed me that space to start to to become grateful for the things that was around me grateful for what my body was able to do and grateful for the support that I had and to start using it so um I wouldn't say that I was depressed um per se but I definitely experienced you know bruh um, because I've ne- I was never clinically diagnosed, um, it, it requires some, some, some counseling sessions, but I definitely experienced a lot of the baby blues early on, but I also do think that it was the way I approached like my eating and things at that time too. I just didn't feel in control of my life. So this time around, I made it, even though, yes, I have my husband and my, you know, it's, it's not all taboo anymore, blah, blah, blah. I still made it a point this time around to focus um, almost over prepare on on like my mindset like these like I said these affirmations and meal prepping and having things together so that I could feel it more in control this time around um, because I felt like so out of control last time but yeah that's my piece no thank you for sharing that uh, I want to turn it to the audience if you guys have any other questions um, for the panel before I go into asking them to drop uh, their one last nugget if you don't remember anything else what information or advice they would give you so if you got a question feel free to either put in the chat or unmute uh, before we close it out i have a question and this is kiana um I'm kind of having, I don't know if someone can give a quick advice or what I should do. I have a five-year-old who um, sometimes, I guess, don't feel comfortable speaking to me if she's, like, crying. Like, I always want to know what's going on, like, what you know, so I could fix it. And she always tells me nothing, but that doesn't sit good with me. Any advice on that? Yeah. I actually, um, hey, Kiana. Hey, I, um, I, I, my Kaden is seven. So she does that same thing, you know, and what I've learned is like, she's a, she has a big heart. So she gets offended or hurt her feelings hurt really quickly. So I've learned her enough to know that like, okay, now it is actually something don't ignore it. Don't force her to talk about it, you know, but I, what I do is now I'll share with her, you know, how, how I felt. Like, so if she's crying and I could, I think I may kind of know, I'll say, well, was it because, you know, I yelled or was it because you didn't get to eat this or you didn't get to go there? And then she'll kind of, you know, say, no, it was nothing. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and then I'll share with her like me, like, you know, when I was your age, like, you know, my feelings got hurt because I couldn't do this or that. And then she would see me kind of be vulnerable enough to be like, yeah. I am crying because I didn't get to do blah, 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 you know? So I've noticed that does work um, for her, but give her the moment to like, see you be vulnerable enough, like where you're, you know, you were hurt or you cried about something and, and you, you know, talk to somebody about it and then trust. Like I literally like, I may be wrong, but I'll pay for it later. But certain stuff, you know, I'll, I'll tell her like, you, you know, you, were you, um, that boy in your class like you thought he was cute or like I'll go there with her because I want her to know she can trust me like I'm not going to be mad you know like talk to me about something or so trust and being vulnerable I would say that and connected to sharing like stories in relating to how you were as a kid I even I do that now expressing my emotions to my daughter you don't want your child to grow up too fast um, but I do let her in on some emotions that I'm feeling so that she doesn't think 
that, so that she doesn't put me on a pedestal that I don't even deserve to be on. And because sometimes that I don't know is a, I feel like you can't relate. Um, and I have, when my daughter has her moments like that, I'll say, well, I want you to know that your opinion matters, your voice matters. So whenever you want to talk, let me know. And I let it go. And sometimes she comes back. Um, well, usually, majority of the time, she comes back and end up saying, well, mom, I was thinking, and here we have it. Cool. Another cool. little gem I'm done then after this, Jeremiah, is watching a movie. It's like if you think you have an inkling of what could be going on with her, watch a movie with her and ask questions about like what the character, what she thinks the character is going through, and she'll start slowly talking about herself. That's a great idea. We had another question came up, um, and this one's from Mary. She says, as a non-parent, how can I be more supportive to my friends with kids? So I'll say um, I have a village of women who, um, again, I live in Austin, Texas, and all my friends live other places. But one thing that my friends do really well is they are actually interested in, in, in my children and the accomplishments that they have in in the little things like what they're eating little and, and it's not to say that you know my my friends are um like they're not interested in me because um they they address me first we talk about things but they hear me they talk to me and they don't try to get tell me what to do in any way or but they may ask more questions right i have friends who in some ways are good at coaching so they'll ask me questions about if i'm if i am venting about something they'll ask me more about it and what that does is it a makes me feel heard but it also makes me feel like um, I'm not being a burden to them. Um, and it also, um, it helps build my trust with them and, and then my children. So now they're becoming aunties and things like that. But also they don't let me keep harping on stuff either. Like if I'm having an issue with, with my kids and my family, and this is just friendships, period. Um, my friends let me vent. They let me talk to them. But they also ask me, okay, so what you going to do next? Kind of what's the solution? What have you thought about? Things like that. Not to say that I always vent to my kids, but she asked how she could be more supportive, I guess. And sometimes that's what it comes about. But um, just to sum it up, my friends, they're, they're interested and they help me come up with solutions without, um, um, I don't want to say offending me. I don't think they feel like they can tiptoe around me, but at the same time, they ask questions more so than, than giving me like prescriptive advice. Okay, great. So, we come to the end and it's kind of like the moment, this is Mother's Day, above all else, if you can encourage your, feather, your fellow sister, um, another mother, what one piece of advice would you give them to let them know they're gonna be great, their kids will be great, you love them, and for them to feel truly encouraged leaving this webinar today. So let's kick it off with that. I would say in thinking of juggling the pressures of motherhood and work, give yourself permission to have time alone. Whether it's at work, if you work from a calendar, block off some time on your calendar that it's literally just you and be consistent with it. And if it's just at home, have a moment where you lock the bathroom door or you lock yourself in your closet and be okay with taking that time by yourself. You deserve it. You are a great mommy and you're working hard. You're doing the best you can. Okay. So I um I have a planner and I this week actually, I at the last Sunday I I was reading it and the quote was a life balance is living from your values. It's creating a life that reflects what's actually important to you. Um, and cause I know sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to work on this. I want to work on that. I want to work on this. But all that time that I want to work on things sometimes takes away from my children and different things that I want to do. So for me, it's about picking, picking and prioritizing. And so, um, we like, and I'll always go back to eating a certain way and meal prepping and things like that. If you, if you want to be healthy, if you want to be certain things that you said, if you have goals, then you have to start prioritizing those things right so if you say that your family being healthy is important to you then you need to reflect that in your actions that's what i took it to mean um and then balance becomes less taboo when when you're not trying to 
balance everything, keep up with everything, watch every show and do all these different things. You focus on what matters. Thank you, Ariel. I would say in moments of strength, prepare for moments of weakness. Um, as mothers, we go through different things. There are different stages to them. And we have to just prepare as much as possible, um, knowing that we have everything capable that every tool that we need is inside of you and i pray that god will bless every mother on here and that you will be confident in your mothering that's it thank you that was great um i think one thing um just for me is that like not to try to put the pressure of being perfect on yourself um and that's something that like um, I think brought on the postpartum depression and just everything um, throughout this journey of motherhood for me is um, like, you don't have to have the calendar full of stuff for them to do. You don't have to have, you know, um, all, you know, it's not, it's never going to go as planned. So don't, um, you know, listen to what other people tell you to do. Um, don't, don't put that pressure on yourself. Your child just wants you there you know, um, and that's, you know, that's all that matters. And they don't care about um, having, um, you know, certain things, you know, to certain toys, or, you know, being able to go somewhere or whatever. Um, they don't care about all that. What they remember is like you being there. Um, those are the memories that they're going to talk about, just things that you did with them, things that they experienced with you, um, times that you were happy, all those. So just try to make sure that you're like your best self at all times but i'm um, not putting the like the pressure of being perfect all the time no thank you um uh, bianca ariel lexis salon thank you so much from the bottom of my heart um, when i came up with this vision um i didn't know how i was going to pull it together what kind of stories you would share um, but i thank you for your transparency and willingness to be open um so somebody else might be able to find some clarity and some peace um in their life so I hope um, everyone that tuned in today um, really just got a, a chance to just listen, take some stuff in and reflect um, and kind of get some realignment about your life as we celebrate Mother's Day um, today and then tomorrow goes back to being just another day. I want you to remember that you're still special and every day is essentially Mother's Day. And um, you don't have to wait to this one time a year for you to feel special and to take care of your mental health. Um, so we had a couple special gifts we wanted to give away. Um, I know Alexis, um, she started her company, Eve's Garden, and um, she wanted to give <laughs> to the very first person um, that jumped on to this. It happened to be my mother, which uh, I don't know if I should let my mom win because uh, she's always going to support me. But uh, I got three, so you can you can choose three. Cool. So it would be um, Elena and um, Donisha. And uh, I don't want to mispronounce her name. Donise Talley. Donisha? Yeah, it's Donisha and Donise. Okay, Donise. I, have, I should have both of their contact information if they got off, but. I think they're still on here. Okay. Donise. Oh, they are both still on here. My chat was covering it. Okay. Yeah. And then Elena. So um, I don't know what information you need, um, Lexis. I can set it up for you. Um, yeah, really, they could follow my Instagram page and inbox me the address and I'll send it right to them like that. Okay, cool. And, and what's the gift? So the gift is these are teas that I'm uh, going to be putting out there this is um burdock root and elderberry tea so instead of just actually the the drink you can actually just take a cup of tea of it so and put your own little honey and everything in it yourself okay cool that sounds great um hopefully they love the tea it tastes good and then they can become a lifelong uh customer yeah. and <laughs> bianca also has something she wants to give away too as she mentioned um she's going to be joining me um, as a financial coach um, to my business, Mental Wealth, um, which is a financial literacy, financial um, education company, where we're trying to go out into the community and teach people how to be better with their finances, help them be better stewards so they can make better decisions that impact 
not only them, but their future generations. So uh, she wanted to award her gift to the person that was like most active in the chat. And I think going back, it's going to be Donise again. Yay. Um, so awesome, Donise, you can have that. And I actually have two to give away, one with Jeremiah and one with me. So if someone wants to write in the chat that you're interested in financial coaching, the first person we see to do that. Oh, Kiana, we see you. So Kiana, this is <laughs> Cool. Well, no, thank you um, so much. And Mentally Fit, we will be continuing for the rest of the month, um, honoring mental health and just being aware. Next week, we're going to be discussing surviving unemployment. Uh, it's going to be some good testimonies. Um, I got a talent acquisition professional um, dealing with transition and losing her job while being pregnant, um, her husband losing his job. So it just be pretty good for us to talk about that and deal with the pressures and anxiety or depression that might stem from losing your job while trying to find another job, especially now in this economy. So um, I'm gonna get ready and pray um, to close out um, this session and then feel free to log off um, if prayer is not for you. Dear Lord, we come to you today. We just wanna thank you um, for this opportunity um, that you allowed us to experience together. Each and every uh, moment that was shared um, I pray, Lord, that uh, it helps um, edify and bring glory to who you are. I pray, Lord, for each and every mother, each and every friend um, that tuned in um, today. I pray, Lord, that you help them and equip them to be better um, in their role that you've given them, that they pursue at all costs um, to raise up children that will be strong, confident, and full of purpose, Lord, me, Father. Also, too, I just pray for protection over um, all of our children. And as we continue to um, find who we are in you, that our mental health um, be guided and be strengthened. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Thank y'all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you guys Thank did great. You. Thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Go enjoy the rest of your evening. Have some uh, wine on me. I'll buy you a bottle. You go cash yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, send me your cash app. I get you uh some uh some nice wine. Yeah. From Walmart. Thank you. I'm on a budget. It gotta come from Walmart. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone. All right. See you later. Peace out.